Recently, there has been a growth of populism in European politics. Many believe that the key to populist success is connected to the way populism is communicated. To find out if this is true, a large group of researchers from all over Europe have come together to study populism as a communication phenomenon. Populist communication is recognised by certain types of arguments. Common for all types of populist communication is the reference to the will of the people. This is based on a belief that the people share one will. The will of the people is typically contrasted with the will of the corrupt or immoral elite, or various threatening minorities. Do you recognise such populist arguments from the debates where you live? Populist political communication involves three groups. One, the populist politicians and parties. Two, the media. And three, the citizens. All populists claim to be the voice of the people, but who the people are and what problems they are facing varies between different types of populists. Right-wing populism tends to blame ethnic, religious or sexual minorities, as well as the political elite, for the problems of ordinary people. Left-wing populism more often blames the powerful, the rich and the wealthy, in addition to the political elite. We find both right and left-wing populism in Europe today. Populists have traditionally operated on the fringes of politics. Recently, however, many populist parties have become more professional in how they organise and operate. Are there any populist politicians or parties in your country? How are the arguments they use different from the way traditional political parties communicate? Media is attracted to populism, though they often disagree with populist arguments. Why? Because populist arguments tend to simplify complex issues and focus on conflict, opposition and drama. And media likes to present content with some conflict and drama that is not too difficult to understand. This gives them more viewers and readers. Sometimes the media also acts as populists. This happens if the media regard themselves as the voice of the people and constantly blame and attack the elite or minorities for the people's problems. In contrast, populists are very seldom charmed by the media. Most populists see media as a part of the elite. They use critical media coverage as evidence that it's us against them, which is an efficient vaccine against any further critical inquiry. Populists often prefer using other communication channels for instance, social media or media outlets they own or control themselves. How is the relationship between populists and the media where you live? Supporters of populism come from all kinds of backgrounds. What they all have in common is some kind of political cynicism and a feeling of distrust. They also tend to trust personal views on economic and cultural differences in society more than they trust statistics and research. Citizens that feel afraid, who see society as unfair and have a feeling of being on their own, are more likely to support populist parties. The effect of the populist message depends on the listener. Those who identify themselves as part of the ordinary people may be agitated when told that those in power no longer represent them. But how about citizens who see themselves as part of a minority described as problematic or threatening? They will often feel excluded and worthless. This means that populism increases division and conflict. How do you think you and your friends will react to populist messages? To fully understand the effect of populist political communication in our societies, we need to continue investigating populism as a communication phenomenon. For more information, please visit www.populistcommunication.eu.